very good evening to all you friends you are all welcome to ama seminar held on yoga for health and happiness recent discoveries by mr kartik vyas i would not like to come between you and the very uh, known and able speaker i would request to kartik bhai to please take over and address us thank you so much thank you sir and thank you to ama for inviting me for this uh, webinar and let's straight dive in and uh, i have a no brainer question for every one of you yeah. would you like to know how does yoga look at health and happiness i said it's a no brainer question and i do i presume that the answer is yes <laughs> yeah type it into the chat box okay so what we will be doing is uh, we'll interact yeah and may i request uh, some of you to put on your uh, uh, videos not too many of you maybe five uh, seven of you yeah so i can see some of you yeah i get i got one two three windows uh four or five four windows yeah two three more can i have two three windows more on yeah and uh, please if you put on your uh, videos i hope you are uh, sitting uh, in a reasonably erect posture and you have reasonable clothes on host is not permitted to start the video yeah that's fine that's fine okay so i can see only three win uh, videos on but that's fine let's uh, straight away dive in uh earlier initially i thought i will not show you any ppt uh, because ppt actually is a hindrance between the speaker and the audience yeah so how many of you would uh, be okay if i don't show you a single ppt yeah if you are okay with me not showing a single ppt type in okay now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 eleven okay so far quickly without wasting time 12 okay so that's 13 so that's roughly one third of you who would uh, like who are okay if i don't show you a single ppt yeah that means two thirds of you would like me to put on the ppt yeah so let's do one thing i'll show you some ppts yeah yeah is that okay not too many ppts we have only one hour together and at ama i have done a five day workshop around uh, this kind of a topic yeah so there is lots we can talk about there's lots that we need to know about yoga okay yeah so qu quite a few are you are okay with me not showing uh, ppts to you all right i'm just going to close my chat box because that would be a distraction and here we go yeah bharat bhai shilpa i can see you so give me a thumbs up if you can see my ppt if you can see my ppt okay great so what we will do is i will go through what i have to present to you and i must confess that there is a lot that i have squeezed into this ppt let us see how much we will cover in about 50 minutes or so and we'll keep the last 7 uh, 10 minutes for q and a yeah normally i get very few questions at the end of any talk or session or even a program of mine for whatever reason it is but let's uh, straight away go into 
when we look at uh, this topic yoga for health and happiness we must look into what yoga calls itself as the yogic mind yeah and to to manage health and happiness or to get health and happiness we need to manage our mind and how do we mind the how do we make the mind yogic uh, three sections that i intend uh, presenting yeah one the mind and yoga psychology section 2 the yogic evaluation of ill health and unhappiness yeah ill health being the opposite of health and unhappiness being the opposite of happiness yeah uh, how many of us would admit that we have all experienced ill health and unhappiness in a, okay let's do one at one thing at a time type in the chat box if you have had some experience or the other of ill health in your life yeah type a y in the chat box if you have had some experience of ill health in your life yeah just quickly type in a y yeah yeah this is the only way in webinars uh, we can make it interactive so please don't feel lazy please don't feel shy there are no right and wrong answers it's just that i would like to have a certain idea of uh, all of you okay great all right okay and how many of you would say that you have also experienced unhappiness in your life so far at some point of time in your life or you are unhappy even right now okay that's uh, about 10 of you have uh, have uh, honestly confessed that you have had experiences okay that makes it 12 of you all right yeah all right so the third section is application of yogic procedures yeah and in this one hour obviously we will not be able to do anything over here but nonetheless i hope to give you a a deeper overview about both uh, health and uh, happiness and we'll also look into one recent uh, uh, discovery from the field of neuroscience yeah and how does it uh, dovetail into our topic today uh, we'll quickly get into that so in section 1 we'll talk about the mind yoga psychology and neuroscience yeah the english word mind doesn't really capture the breadth and the depth of the yoga word for mind yeah uh, in yoga it is called chitta yeah but for the time for our purpose we'll keep talking about it as the mind so all our health issues and all our emotional issues and all our problems of life are occurring because there is this faculty called buddhi or intellect within us yeah and every input that we receive from the external world receives every sensory input receives the stamp of buddhi buddhi is the final instrument faculty in us that as if says tathastu yeah whatever is being presented this is it so be it yeah and how does this sensory input uh, what is the stamp that buddhi gives yeah so stored or contained in the deepest subconscious levels of buddhi are eight predispositions or eight traits and as i said they are hidden deep into our subconscious what are these eight predispositions and traits doing they are influencing everything that we do underline everything yes underline everything these eight predispositions and traits we are predisposed as if automatically and these eight predispositions make up constitute everything that we humans are capable of creating and have created in this world of ours 
these eight predispositions and traits they influence our thinking they influence our speaking they influence our behavior they therefore influence our relationships they influence our work they influence our performance they also therefore are responsible for us experiencing either good health or ill health as well as experiencing happiness and unhappiness health and happiness are by products health and happiness i repeat are by products so what are these eight predispositions and traits that are buried deep in our subconscious called we have as i said eight of them so we have four that are positive and we have four that are negative and these oppose each other it is in this permutation and combination of these eight traits that makes up the uniqueness of our personality that makes up the uniqueness of our mind it is this interaction and integration of these eight in different ratios and proportions that eventually creates health problems and is responsible for our unhappiness strengthening the four positive traits will promote health and happiness by default the negative are dominant active and strong in us and they are responsible for our ill health in the broadest sense of the term as well as our unhappiness this is extremely important before i show you what these eight traits are yeah so what am i saying that we have two set of opposing forces within us two set of predispositions two sets of subconscious traits and when i say subconscious they are buried deep in our subconscious but they are influencing everything that we do consciously the whole objective of the yoga system is to activate and strengthen these four positive traits and predispositions as we strengthen these four positive predispositions and traits they counteract and weaken the four negative subconscious traits as one increases the positive increases the negative automatically weakens and eventually dwindles so would you like to know the names of these eight traits in original sanskrit and we'll briefly understand the english terminology if i have your permission and if you are interested in knowing these eight traits i will go further so it is important that you type yes in the chat box or y in the chat box very few of you have typed in yes so far yeah yeah later i may ask you to type in other things than yes or no okay and i'm so happy to see some of you from my family friends students some of you i haven't uh, seen and met you since many years but welcome so here we go what are these eight traits the four positive traits are dharma what is dharma that predisposition and trait which is positive that tells us in every situation what is right and what is wrong and gives us the inner strength and the inner conviction to do that what is right proper appropriate in every situation who decides what is my dharma i decide what is my dharma who decides what is your dharma you decide what is your dharma but broadly speaking dharma takes also into account our social relationships so the various dimensions of dharma in terms of values in terms of the laws of life in terms of our our loftier mission and purpose in life all of it constitutes dharma having a certain code of conduct that respects every human being that does not hurt every hurt every human being having a moral code of conduct and having a sense of morality this one word dharma 
means so much. It is a multi-dimensional and multifaceted trait and predisposition within us. As we train our mind to become calmer, the mind gets this clarity about what is dharma and as well as its opposite, what is a dharma. So dharma is what therefore enables us to take right action. The right action that will promote health, the right action that will health in the widest sense. You know, and over here, I like to quote Dr. Jonas Salk. Dr. Jonas Salk, the inventor of the polio vaccine, when he came to the Yoga Institute here in Santa Cruz, Mumbai, which is uh, incidentally the world's oldest organized center of yoga, 102 years old, with which I have been associated now for 40 years. When he visited the Yoga Institute, this is what he actually wrote in the visitor's diary. And his message was, modern medicine is a science of disease. Yoga is a science of health, not just physical health, but mental, moral, social, and spiritual health. Incidentally, this is now the WHO, the World Health Organization's definition itself of health, where health is not seen in a very narrow sense of only health of the body, but also mental, emotional, moral, social, and spiritual health. So how does right action help us to live healthily and happily in all these domains of our life, in all these areas of our personality is what this first positive subconscious predisposition and trait of dharma or right action determines. Every wrong action, every inappropriate action and inappropriate, if the result is ill health, it is inappropriate. If the result is unhappiness, it is inappropriate. It is the wrong kind of action. As we walk on the path of dharma, we start gaining deeper and deeper understanding, knowledge, and ultimately wisdom, which is the second positive subconscious trait called gyan. The third... Uh, positive predisposition and subconscious trait is vairagya. Yeah. So gnan is knowledge and learning. And vairagya, detached involvement. I'm completely involved, but detached from the consequences and even in fact, even in the results. I'm completely committed to doing my duty, which is my dharma. But as a result of doing those actions, whatever are the results and consequences, I am detached from it. But at the same time, I will aim for Aishwarya, which is excellence. So if I do not achieve what I think was an appropriate uh, health and happiness, this commitment towards excellence makes me look into my own dharma. Where did I perhaps go wrong? Where was my knowledge and learning and wisdom a little limited? Where did I get too attached and therefore I got carried away and therefore it created stress and tension and anxieties in my life and did not allow me to achieve excellence as far as my health and happiness is concerned. So every... Every... One of these four positive subconscious traits has its opposite forces, has its opposite subconscious traits. So the opposite of dharma, what will it be? A dharma. The opposite of gyan, what will it be? A gyan. The opposite of vairagya, what will it be? Rag or a vairagya. And the opposite of aishwarya will be an aishwarya. So Opposite of right action, we have wrong action, a dharma. Opposite of knowledge, learning, and wisdom, gyan, we have a gyan or ignorance. Opposite of detached involvement or vairagya, we have attachment or rag. And the opposite of aishwarya, strength of mind, is weakness. 
the byproduct of these four positive traits, as I said, is health and happiness. The byproduct of these four negative subconscious traits and predispositions is going to be ill health and unhappiness. Are we good so far? Yeah. If you are good so far, please type in a yes in the chat box. And let me see how much time I have taken up. Okay. Okay, great. So let's move further. And I'll skip this. Yeah. So our mind, our mind or chitta is, is an inferior mind, limited mind, full of weaknesses, disease, and it is also unhappy. And why is it so? Because every input that, it, that we receive from the external world has to grow through the filter of what are known as the kleshas. The kleshas are certain defects that are inherent in our personality, in our way of thinking. They are as if, according to uh, uh, neuroscience research, they don't, of course, talk about the kleshas because they don't have knowledge. But what the kleshas imply and what the kleshas mean, there is a lot of neuroscience evidence for it. We'll reserve that for some other session, some other program in the future. But right now, let's look at glaciers as the pain causing structural defects that are there in our very chitta, that are therefore there in the very brain. Yeah? And according to neuroscientists, many of the errors that we make in our thinking, from a yoga point of view, we will relate it to these glaciers. So what is the byproduct of it? Uh, the byproduct of it uh, is stressful knowledge. Yeah, and as we know, stress is the root cause of all our problems and health. So therefore, in simple language, what is happening? We are interacting with the world all the time and everything about the world we are receiving inside. Everything that we receive goes through this filter of these eight positive, four positive and four negative subconscious traits and these glaciers and the vasanas are all those feelings and the subconscious impressions that we have. They are filtering, they are therefore distorting everything. So like, for example, I asked some of you to put on your windows, uh, your videos, not too many of you, so that I could see you. Now, if you have not put, your uh, videos, that's the sensory input that I'm receiving. And uh, the filter of these uh, glaciers, vasanas, and those negative traits that I talked about will make me judgmental. And I will say, how stupid are these people who have come in this webinar? Now, there is no stupidity on your part. It is my thinking. It is my interpretation. It is my perception that is now giving me unhappiness and that is creating my anxiety, that is creating my stress. And internally, as this keeps getting stronger and stronger, it will release all kinds of chemicals inside of me. All kinds of hormonal changes will take place inside of me. And eventually, over a period of time, a certain organ, a certain system will fall weak and I will have those kind of health problems. So for example, in the pandemic, those of us who have had a weak respiratory system, for example, may have got COVID very, very easily. And there could be some of us whose respiratory system and the immune system, if it is strong and robust, we may have got exposed to it. We may have got the COVID uh, virus within us, but we may have been asymptomatic as so many people have been uh, reported as being asymptomatic. So every interpretation from the external world, as well as every perception of my inner world, because it is getting processed by these subconscious traits, eventually, I experience health problems or I experience unhappiness. Happiness is a birthright. Health is a birthright. Most of us, when we are born, except those with congenital problems, when we are born, we are happy. And when we are born, we are healthy. 
then what goes wrong? What goes wrong is what goes wrong over here in this mind, in this chitta, or in this buddhi of ours. Yeah. And the more the more our perceptions, interpretations of ourselves, of people, of the external world is negative, the greater is going to be the stress in our life. And the greater the stress, the more are our chances of ill health and unhappiness. The yoga model of health and happiness is simple. So far, so good. If it is so far, so good, give me a thumbs up reaction. Yeah, at the bottom of your screen, you see there is a tab called reaction. And if you click over there, you'll get a word, this virtual thumbs up like Bharat Bhai and Shilpa and uh, Anuj Bhatia are able to show you. Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Great. Good job. Let's go further. So here is how neuroscience tells us is the hierarchy of our brain development. Yeah. We do neuroscience popularly divides it into the downstairs brain and in and the upstairs brain. Yeah. What is the downstairs brain also called the hind brain because it is at the back. It has these two important parts, the cerebellum and brainstem. What does it do? It, uh, what what is the popular term alarm center why is it alarm center i'm going to soon come to it yeah the last point in this hind brain and the limbic brain that we will see so our body temperature is regulated by the hind brain blood pressure heart rate balance motor regulation gut reactions are all controlled and regulated by the hind brain the limbic brain, which is the emotional center, is uh, regulating our gut reactions, our emotional reactivity, our attachment. And the two together are what gets involved in the fight, flight, or freeze responses. So what does that mean? Every time I'm upset, every time I'm negative, every time I'm critical, every time I'm judgmental, every time I'm scared, every time I'm frustrated, every time I'm nervous, every time I'm low in confidence, every time I'm operating from some fear or the other, every time I don't know what is right and what is wrong, every time I'm confused, every time I am under any of these mental states, the brain which has one and one primary function alone, which is the brain is designed to ensure that we survive. It is designed for survival. And the brain therefore is all the time trying to detect, is there any threat to life? Is there any threat to life? These days there is no physical threat to life, except in the COVID, if we keep going out without a mask, we don't uh, take care of social distancing and uh, we don't do these kind of things that we ought to be doing. Otherwise, there's no threat to life. But for the brain, every criticism, if somebody criticizes me, it is a threat. If someone gets angry at me, it is a threat. If someone behaves in a way that I don't like or I don't prefer, the brain interprets it as a threat. And, and then, we do only one of these three responses subconsciously of almost instinctively. We will either fight that person, that situation, we will want to run away from that situation, or we will freeze. We will not know what to do. And we will continue with unproductive behavior until we either fall so sick that a doctor now takes over and tells us exactly what we should do and not do, or we have to get hospitalized and so on and so forth. Yeah. Both the limbic brain and the hind brain operate at an unconscious level. All our emotions arise from this limbic brain and together these are called the downstairs brain. We are completely unaware, we are completely unconscious of these impulses that are coming from the downstairs brain. And every time we do not act consciously, we do not think consciously in every situation, 
we do not examine every thought every behavior every perception every response of ours that is important for us to examine we will keep operating in the downstairs brain neuroscientists very categorically tell tell us today that for a major portion of our 24 hours in a day almost 90 plus and this is perhaps going to shock most of us over here almost 90% plus of the time we are operating from the unconscious downstairs brain every time we are emotional every time we do behaviors that people tell us are counterproductive or unhealthy the top part of the brain is a more recent development compared to this downstairs brain the downstairs brain is considered to be some 400 million years old the upstairs brain happened much later and this upstairs brain is what is responsible for self understanding remember gyan that i talked about logic decision making impulse control body and emotional regulations all of these executive function skills are happening from over here this top part of the brain and therefore the whole of the yoga system is intended for us to function from the upstairs brain and gradually by operating from the upstairs brain we influence the downstairs brain and this is the development of the entire human personality especially the chitta the mind the buddhi the intellect in an integrated fashion yeah so far so good yeah give me another thumbs up reaction yeah and if you have any questions please type your questions in the chat box and uh, at the end i will answer your questions and uh, they will be taken up uh, towards the end all right so let's move further so how does yoga evaluate an individual who is suffering from disease and is also unhappy yeah. first and foremost we will understand what is the kind of chitta what is the type of mind that the person has and i am going to show you the names of three kinds of personalities or three kinds of chittas according to yoga which are all three prone and susceptible to disease and unhappiness yeah so these three chittas also represents the intrinsic character of an individual and it's an entire personality type they are called the bhumis let's skip the sanskrit term so those prone to disorders and unhappiness are those kind of chittas that are stupefied dull and confused technically called moodha मैं इधर जाऊं या उधर जाऊं बड़ी मुश्किल में हूं मैं किधर जाऊं मैं ये करूं या वो करूं मुझे पता नहीं है सही क्या है दिस इज अनफॉर्चुनेटली वॉट द मूड चित इज ऑल्सो इज ऑल अबाउट इट इज अनकलियर कंफ्यूज अबाउट इट्स ओन धर्म एंड अधर्म द सेकेंड काइंड ऑफ चित्त इज अ माइंड दैट इज रेस्टलेस दैट इज इम्पल्सिव दैट इज अनस्टेबल so the greater the mental and emotional instability this kind of a chitta is also going to be prone to disease and unhappiness and the third kind of chitta that is prone is the distracted and but occasionally steady or the vikshipta chitta in inherently each of these three chittas is going to be prone to less or more eventual disease 
ill health and happiness the second thing that we will need to look at is where are what is the kind of biological ailment that the person is having and what is the sensitive region which is the part of the body that is got affected which is the organ that has got affected which is the system that has got affected yeah and then what are those secondary factors these are psychosomatic and psychogenic factors that are responsible for creating more than 90% of all our diseases that originate in the mind these are called psychosomatic and psychogenic diseases what are some of these uh, uh, diseases sickness and vyadhi is the first casualty of the kind of mind that we have yeah sickness in yoga is the disorder of the humors the secretions and the organs of the body yeah and the deficiency and imbalance of the nutrients inside our body there are nine such factors that yoga will consider over here the second will be incompetence yeah i am confused i am mentally lazy i am unsure i am unclear i am perplexed i am disoriented i am bewildered and therefore lost what should i be doing in in terms of my own health as well as my happiness yeah it is a certain incapacity of my own mind yeah the third is doubt i am full of doubt yeah it is a kind of thinking that says oh maybe this also is right maybe that also is right yeah when doubt goes faith comes in and faith brings in conviction that this it brings in certainty i'm sure this is what i need to do and this is what i need to avoid fourth is delusion or pramad i am very careless and we see so many people these days are careless they are unable to concentrate and focus on that what they need to be doing for health and disease fifth sloth laziness and alasya i am lazy i can but i won't do what i need to do for my own health and unhappy ha happiness both the mudha and the shipta chitta are going to be of that kind the vikshipta chitta will occasionally come out of its laziness but it will not be able to consistently do what it needs to be doing the sixth factor is sensuality avir avirati all kinds of addictions that we have whether it is addiction for food internet shopping gambling work sex and so on are going to be responsible for our diseases ill health and unhappiness yeah the seventh i have wrong knowledge i make errors in my thinking and that's what prompted perhaps george bernard shaw to say beware of his false knowledge it is more dangerous than even ignorance yeah wrong thinking false knowledge all of it is this one uh, factor that i am talking about the eighth factor is i am not able to attain good health i am not able to attain happiness and the ninth one if i have attained i am unable to stay happy i am unable to remain healthy for the rest of our lives yeah it is failure to maintain this attain state and as a result what do we experience because of all that i have said so far the sensory inputs my own subconscious traits the pers the uh, defects that are there inside of me which are pain causing my perceptions my adharma my agyan my avairagya my anaishwarya the kind of chitta that i have the system that is got affected any one of these nine factors that i talked about will create the symptoms how will i know that i am unhealthy i will have sickness and disease how will i know i am unhappy here are the four or five ways by which i can detect unhappiness there will be dukkha in my life sorrow unhappiness there there will i have will have despair even de depression dor manasya the mana is dor is negative 
there is despair i don't see hope yeah uh, uh, there is a certain research that tells us that helplessness and hopelessness are worse for the heart than even smoking feelings of helplessness and hopelessness are known to predispose us to all kinds of disease conditions cancer patients who feel helpless and hopeless die earlier and there have been documented cases of cancer patients who in spite of the spread of the disease they are full of faith full of positivity full of hope no element of despair who have even when doctors and medical science has said we can do nothing for them and have raised their hands th there are now documented cases of such cancer patients who have gone through spontaneous remission and i have had very direct uh, experience of this when uh, uh, in 2004 our six and a half year old son at that time six and a half years old was detected with stage 4 cancer yeah. we don't have the time to go into it but today he is 22 and he is a survivor he is a thriver the next thing that we will also experience is a certain amount of nervousness and shakiness as far as the body itself is concerned yeah and this can also be caused due to a loss in our ability to control this equilibrium in the body according to neuroscience there is a certain part of the brain that is involved and last but not the least our breathing itself is going to be irregular heavy forced laborious yeah and all of this is caused due to mental agitation yeah so what have i said so far every time we are uh, let me check the time oh we are 10 minutes away from our ending time so yeah so what have we seen so far yoga will look into the personality type the chitta bhumi yeah and we have seen those prone to all these kind of disorders psychic mind related are the moodha the shipta and the vikshipta kind of chittas yeah we also have seen that yoga will look into and will also address the biological ailment that is involved the sensitive region the primary factor which is the sensitive region that is affected which system is it the nervous system is it the respiratory system is it the cardiovascular system is it the musculoskeletal system is it the gastroenterological system which is the system which is the organ which is the part that is affected and all the secondary factors which we have seen Nine plus uh, five uh, or four of them in all thirteen of them, yeah. And the last part of the evaluation is that what is responsible for our ill health and uh, unhappiness are our values. Do we value health, or are we not really valuing health? Are we valuing growth, or are we not valuing growth? are we valuing peace of mind or are we valuing something else what are our values what will be our motives and motivations what are our attitudes what are some of those habits that we have lifestyle habits what time do we wake up what time do we sleep how much do we sleep in fact just today i was reading a neuroscience research that was telling that is indicating that even the phases of the moon has a effect on our sleep the time that we sleep and the amount of time that we will sleep yeah and five our way of life our lifestyle each of these uh, c factors a b and c factors eventually is responsible for our ill health and unhappiness and therefore how does yoga and yogic procedures address all these issues yeah 
many different ways ahar the diet certain respiratory practices change in our state of mind which is yoga vichar healthy routines which is also part of uh, yoga achar and yoga vihar as well as yoga ahar yeah our diet the education of the physical which is through asanas respiratory practices which are through pranayama practices yoga hygiene through yoga kriyas psychosomatic practices which will also include mudras and then we will need to first start working of as far as our vichar is concerned change in our state of mind yeah where we need to develop the strong will to work on ourselves with if the will is weak no amount of listening to such lectures no amount of reading no amount of youtube videos is ever going to help yeah are we inclined towards developing greater and greater self reliance are we willing to learn how to handle our disease if we already have some ill health problem or disease are we learning to manage our life itself yeah and then are we willing to manage our emotions and emotional aspects yeah are we willing to change our thinking by better emotional management are we willing to work on our fears and anger and hatred and jealousy and anxiety because all of this affects and interferes with the working of the body and makes us prone to health as well as disease conditions yeah all of this incidentally yoga addresses yeah become emotionally strong reduce being touchy being sensitive learning to regulate our strong emotions and becoming emotionally independent through yoga education developing greater acceptance and faith and therefore working on our mind and our body is critical for health in the widest sense of the term and it is this comprehensive integrated fail safe full proof approach of yoga that has for millennium contributed to the growth and development of the human mind and the human personality as far as our country is concerned and we unfortunately have moved away from this way of life we have to now relearn this yogic way of life so for the next uh, maybe 5 6 minutes we can have some questions if you have any questions please type them in the chat box yeah and ama will regulate uh, the questions so are there any questions yes sir yes sir yeah go ahead ha huh. so amazing session i think participants are totally we can say spiritually or happy and they are actually doing the activities when you were speaking <laughs> so it was a very interactive session so the first question which is uh, here is on the floor is that what is food to be taken for good state of mind what is the food to be taken for good state of mind the food that does not agitate food that does not irritate yeah food that is not spicy and we'll say kya ye khana bhi koi khana hai ye jeena bhi koi jeena hai food that is wholesome food that is freshly cooked food that is not stale food that is not processed food that is not packaged so nothing that we can buy from a supermarket yoga advises is healthy food yeah it is tamasic and rajasic food food that makes us dull and sluggish or food that makes us mentally and emotionally agitated and irritated the rest is satvic food yeah as is the food so is the mind as is the mind so is the person as is the person so is the health 
as is the health so is the happiness thank you sir the next question we can take is uh, is it possible to only operate at conscious level all the time wouldn't it overwhelm the brain as there are no, so many things happening around us all the time especially in this hustling age very good question take away 7 and 8 hours of sleep but i am going to say something that i have not said so far and that is i talked about and we talked about only three kinds of chittas none of these three types of chittas are completely ready to be devoted to developing and working on themselves in a yogic way none of these chittas minds personalities according to yoga is a normal mind then what is the normal mind the whole objective of yoga is to enable us to go to the from the top the second level of the mind and that is the one pointed chitta the ekagra chitta and when it becomes a habitually one pointed chitta it is trained now over years of and maybe lifetimes of yoga sadhana to remain conscious and as one practicing sankhya yogi of the 20th century highly evolved said that this one pointedness this peak level of concentration this conscious living continues even in sleep and still above that is that mind which is a mind that is completely mastered in the words words of my guru's guru shri yogendra ji the founder of the yoga institute this most highly completely developed chitta or mind there is no dividing line between the conscious and the subconscious the two are one that's an amazing state to attain beyond and above that is only one thing remains and that is liberation yeah और भी जहान है दोस्तों जीने के लिए मंजिले और भी है या वी आर अ स्टोर हाउस ऑफ ट्रिमेंडस अनटैप पोटेंशियल एंड वी आर ऑल अ स्लीप सो इज इट पॉसिबल थ्रू योग वे ऑफ लिविंग येस इट इज पॉसिबल इज गोइंग टू बी माय फर्म कन्विक्ट आंसर बेस्ड ऑन कन्विक्शन thank you thank you very much sir truly says there are many questions and advices popping up but we have very limited time we have yeah, so i take, would not be able to take everything yeah, but take uh, one but, final one take one yeah as the last one i will take that uh, there one person is like having an advice basically not question that all have different priorities when we have health pro- problems we go for yoga and meditation but for happiness we depend more on outside situation and others so please advise on that sir yeah good question once again the three kinds of chittas that we talked about that are prone to ill health and unhappiness are all outward going and outward seeking the whole objective and purpose of yoga is to take us inward and this inwardness begins with the ekagra chitta and ends with the top level of the chitta which is called the niruddha chitta so therefore where is my happiness coming from is it coming outside from praise appreciation of people is it coming from external awards rewards money name fame position power if i am chasing happiness outside i am actually going to paradoxically experience increasing unhappiness and increasing ill health but if for me the reward is have i done my dharma to the best of my ability and in in whatever i am doing am i aiming to excel am i completely committed to doing my dharma and am i free from attachment to results 
then there is no stress, there is no tension, there is no anxiety. Modern uh, psychology has another term for this. Intrinsic, where is the locus of control? Where is the center of control? Is it intrinsic or is it extrinsic? Is it external or is it internal? Yoga has been saying this for thousands of years. Go within. Everything is within. To the questions of your life, said the poet, you are the only answer. To the solutions, to the problems of your life, you are the only solution. Go within. The whole purpose of yoga is to go within and find and discover the source of health as well as the source of happiness within. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. The one hour time was like, it was like less shortage of that. Right. But it goes like that. But yeah, it went like a snap. Yeah, but I, I am definitely sure all the participants enjoyed the interactive session. And we can see the your mastery over the subject. And Nair, sir, is here. He is also. Thank you very much, sir. I was in another room. <laughs> okay. Simultaneous Thanks. program going on. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, A A M A is tremendous. Yeah, yeah I yeah gratitude to, to A M A. After COVID, you had to come here. Yes, certainly, certainly. <laughs> I look forward to being at A M A once we are through with all of this. So yeah, really. may God bless all of us. May thank we you. all be healthy. May we yeah. all be happy. Thank you, thank you, good night. Thank, thank night. you very much. Good night. Bye bye, Bharat. Bye. You can send us on our email. We will forward it to Karthik Vyasar and he will be very happy to even answer to that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, Karthik, sir. Sure. Looking forward to meet you sooner. Yes. Thank sooner, you. not later. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Good night. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye.